Hey everybody, um, so today I just wanted to kind of do an intro to using Visa in LabVIEW. So um, Visa is going to be the driver um, provided by NI that allows you to communicate with different devices. Um, one of the really cool things about Visa is it allows you to connect to all sorts of different types of devices. So I can communicate with, uh, you know, serial devices, USB devices, GPIB devices, PXI, um, it even supports like TCP IP as well. Um, so we can connect to devices over our network using um, Visa. Um, and we basically just have a couple of simple functions that basically abstract all of that, you know, diff the differences between those different devices where we basically have like an open read, write, and close. Um, so it makes it really easy to set up uh, communications with different devices. So, um, here I just wanted to show if we go to instrument IO um, we now have access to where we're going to find all of our different visa functions so instrument drivers here we're going to find a list of just um, uh, these are basically um, plug-and-play they're you know visa code already written that allows you to communicate with different devices um, some of these are you know written by the actual equipment manufacturer some are written by other people um, and you know some are certified by NI, meaning that NI has gone ahead and tested them and made sure that everything works. Some aren't, um, so some work really well, and some give you out of the box, you know, um, really high level control. Some will come even with like examples and stuff, so you can um, basically just you know select what your device, um, and you know it's already code already written for just controlling it, reading data from it, etc. Depending on what the device is. Um, so I'll do a separate video on kind of instrument drivers and where you can get these and how you can write your own as well. Um, so we have here uh, Visa. So here's where we're going to have a lot of our Visa functions. You can see there's also a GPIB section. So here's a few functions that are specific to GPIB um, that kind of are outside of the norm. And then also serial, there's some additional serial functions that are specific to serial. So Visa is, like I said, is just a massive abstraction for all of these different ways that, you know, devices can communicate. Um, so when we're programming in Visa, if we go to this advanced section, um, we're pretty much always going to start with this uh, Visa open function. So I'm just going to drop that down. We connect a Visa instrument here. So this could be, you know, a constant, a control. You can even pass in a string that contains it, depending on if you're, you know, reading that from a file or something. Um, but yeah, basically this will be a link to your device that you're connecting to. So I don't have anything plugged in right now. Um, there's one uh, TCP IP device. It's actually not live, but just a demo. You know, this could say, you know, COM4, COM5, COM6, stuff like that. Um, but this is pretty much what you need to just open a connection to the device. So this is going to try to open a port, um, regardless of whether that is a, a serial device, a USB device, a TCP IP device, etc. It's just going to try to open that port and it's going to return an error if it can't. Um, the next big thing that you're going to need to do for Visa is set up your communications properly. So the biggest thing with Visa is just the initialization. If you get the initialization set up correctly, everything else is super easy. Um, so if you're having trouble getting Visa working, um, I can almost guarantee it's an initialization error. Um, so if we connect a property node um, to our Visa reference here, um, we get all of these different properties showing up as options. Um, some of these are things that you can read about you know, the Visa device. Um, and some of them are things that you can control. So you're going to want to make sure you set up your communications correctly, depending on the type of device that you're talking to. So you can see here, there's stuff that's specific to like GPIB or serial or PXI, TCP IP, et cetera. So you'll want to make sure that depending on what type of device you're talking to, that you get these things set up correctly. Um, Cause once you get these set up, it's super easy to read and write data back and forth between devices. Um, so I just wanted to highlight some of the very common ones that you'll see. So if you go to message based settings, um, there's this termination character and termination character enable. These are two very common ones. So a lot of 
serial USB devices, even TCP IP devices actually, um, will use termination characters to basically let you know that the message is over, right? So maybe it's sending you some data and at the end of that data, it's gonna peg on a termination character. So that could be a line feed, a carriage return, or it could be a carriage return and a line feed. Um, so um, these are very common ones to set up. Um, so let's drop down termination character. You can see by default, it's wanting to read that. I can change it to a write. Um, one thing that's a little unique about this is it's an integer. So it's hard to know what that integer represents in terms of a termination character. So the thing I usually do is just drop a string representing these characters. So if I go to string and um, down here at the bottom, I have different types. So I have carriage return, I have line feed, and then end of line basically is that carriage return and that line feed. So depending on how the device ends communication, I can drop this down and I will just use the typecast function to um, typecast that to an integer for me. So I can tell it that yeah, I want it to be this data type. And now I've got my termination character set. So yeah, using a line feed. So that's the most common thing I've seen, you know, in terms of being able to set these for your communications. Um, and once you get the termination character set, it makes reading data very simple. Um, Another common thing um, you'll see is in these serial settings, you have options for things like baud rate, data bits, parity, stop bits, flow control, end mode for reads or writes, um, and details about your actual flow controls. So all of these things are common um, things to set when using serial. Um, so if you don't set these, everything's going to be the default, which I believe is 9600 baud, um, eight data bits, no parity, one stop bit, no flow control. So a lot of devices just default to that, but if for, you know, it's gonna de depend on the device you're talking to. So you're gonna need to read the manual and just figure out um, how that needs to be set. Um, but basically you can set all of those through this. Um, one thing kind of just as a uh, side note, um, if you go to the serial here, there is also this configure port, um, which is, it can be used to basically start up your uh, serial session. And it's basically got inputs for all of these different um, things that you might set. Um, and if you actually open this up, um, it's basically just doing what I was just showing where it's basically, yeah, we've configured stuff like timeouts and baud rates and data bits and stop bits and parity and termination character. And it's just writing all of those things um, to the visa reference uh, using the property node. So this is another thing you can use to just configure all of that. Um, you don't have to though, you can manually go map all of these things here as well. So it's really up to you, um, but this is available so you can wire in you know, how your device is going to be communicating. Um, and like I said, once you get that initialization set up, using Visa is super easy. Um, so if we can get that set up correctly, um, everything else is very, very simple. Um, so there's this Visa close function, which after we communicate with the device, we'll always want to close that session. So that's gonna you know, free up the device. Um, so if uh, you know different software or something needs to communicate with it, it'll be available. Um, so yeah, we'll always want to close that after the fact. Um, so now let's look at writing data to a serial device. So if I just connect that reference in, um, and basically all we have is a string input. So whatever data we're writing, we just need to convert that to a string. Um, so it could be you know a random number, it could be a command, it could be whatever, right? Um, so you know there will be times where you have a command that you want to send, and it could just be something like, um, yeah, something like that, right? So I've connected my command I want to send, and it will write that to the serial buffer. Um, you also get this output that has, it's named return count. This is basically the amount of bytes that you wrote to the buffer. Um, that's basically it for writing. It's pretty simple. Um, you may, so depending on how you have this configured, 
you can make it automatically add a termination character to your rights. Um, if not, you can always go in and add that here. Um, so I could either, you know, type that into this string or I could even like concatenate strings and add like a line feed or a carriage return or something like that. Um, so yeah, writing's pretty simple. Um, for reading, um, this one, there's a couple of different options um, in how we can use this. Um, and that largely is gonna depend on the device we're talking to. So our read function, the only input is a byte count. Um, so our visa read function is going to um, either wait for one, well, it's gonna wait for one of three things to happen. If we enter a byte count here, it's gonna wait until either that amount of data is available in the serial buffer. So if I specified 1,024 bytes, this is gonna wait until I get 1,024 bytes. Or um, the, the next option is gonna be a timeout. So if a timeout occurs, so if I've set my timeout to maybe like two seconds, it's gonna wait until either 1,024 bytes have been received or that timeout has occurred. Now the third condition, and this is the best one to use if you can use it, is gonna be when a termination character is received. So if we've gone ahead and we've set our termination character um, and we've enabled that. Um, and so now we have this end of line constant, which is like carriage return line feed. Um, this is gonna wait for, we have this 1024 connected, which we have to connect something. So it's either gonna wait until we get that amount of data, the timeout occurs, or we get a termination character. So the termination character, like I said, is the best way to handle that because if we get the, the data back with that termination character in five seconds, uh, or sorry, five milliseconds, um, you know, it could be you know, 50 milliseconds depending on the device, we're just gonna boom, move on, output the data. We know that was the end of the command. Um, and a lot of the times you don't necessarily know how much data to expect back. So it can be, you know, good practice just to set this to a high number and use termination characters to get that data back. Um, and it's just gonna output that as a string. And it also outputs this return count, which is basically the number of bytes that we read back. So, um, like I said, if you can rely on termination characters, that is always the best way to handle things. Um, sometimes you can't though. Sometimes you need to specify a specific number of bytes to read back, and you've got to know what that amount of bytes is. Um, and one other thing you can do, um, so if we open serial, you can see there's this uh, bytes at port. Um, so um, you do have to be careful with this uh, property though, um, because it's going to return how many bytes are available in the serial port buffer at that instance when you read it, which if there's still more data coming, you can miss data this way. Um, but basically I can connect this and um, it's going to output a number of bytes and I can connect that in. So now it's going to just, um, I'm going to write this data to it and then I'm going to see how much data is at the port and I'm going to read that much data. Like I said, you do have to be careful with that because you can miss data, um, but sometimes you have no choice but to use bytes at port. Um, especially um, that you're going to have some uh, devices that just stream data and they send data you know, every, you know, some frequency, right, could be every second. Um, if they use a termination character, then it's easy, right? You just set your read to, you know, basically wait for a termination character, you pull it out. Some devices don't, though, and they're just returning a raw number. Um, so using bytes at port is a good way you can basically say, hey, if there's uh, data at the port, read it. If there's not data, you know, wait, and, you know, just iterate through that over and over again. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it though to Visa, right? These four functions will work for almost everything you're trying to do in Visa. Um, so open, write, read, and close. Um, like I said, almost everything takes place in initialization. So getting this initial stuff set up is mission critical to making your Visa simple and easy to work with. Um, a good thing I found um, if you open NI Max and connect to your device and open a Visa test panel, you can practice sending commands back and forth. Um, and this can be a really useful tool because um, you can adjust these same settings that are available here in your Visa test panel. 
And you know, just then you can just write down, hey, these were all the settings I used and communication was working great. And then you know you just basically need to match those here. So you know, just a simple way to get your serial communications or USB or TCP or you know, whatever it might be. Um, this humidity, for example, is actually a TCP IP session. Um, which is kind of interesting, right? Because I'm not setting anything like ports and, um, you know, uh, IP addresses and, you know, information about that kind of connection. I'm just using Visa and it's all abstracted. I, I've already configured all of that stuff in NI Max. So um, kind of cool. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, there are some, you know, other functions that you might use at times. Um, so like write from file, right? You're going to pass in basically a file and it's going to read the contents of the file and write that. Same thing, you know, read to file. You're going to read data in the serial port and write that to a file. So um, it, these are ways that if you have like commands, you know, built into files, you can just, hey, point to the file and it will read and write automatically. Or if you want to record the results, you know, you can do that here. Um, there's some options for locks, so I can lock Visa resources so that other people can't access them. Um, a lot of devices only allow one connection at a time anyways, but some will allow multiple, so um, this is one way you can actually lock that out or unlock it. Um, you can do event handling, so you can specify Visa events, so that could be like waiting on like a termination character, it could be waiting on a specific character to be sent over um, or you know just different events certain lines to go high or low etc um, and then basically you can trigger stuff when these events occur um, I use these almost never um, but they are there um, and then register access so this is going to be more for working with like your PXI type devices but you can go read um, data um, from registers um, which I've never used these but um, yeah like I said these four functions are pretty much all you need in addition to property nodes um, to communicate with almost any device. Um, so uh, that's kind of our uh, Visa crash, crash course. Um, I hope that was helpful and thank you guys for tuning in. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.